Greetings, salutations, respect, and love. I'm Scott, and you're in the prog corner. And oh man, I am so excited. Today is the day, the day I unfurl my top 25 on an unsuspecting world. Yeah, 2023 has been an amazing year for prog. It started out a little slow the first quarter. Uh, not a whole lot of great albums, so I was getting a little bit worried. But man, uh, 2023 shaped up to be an amazing year. So I'm doing my top 25. I will be doing honorable mentions at the end. There'll be like 15 of them. So this is going to give you my top 40. Now, I'll do honorable mentions at the end. Last year, I did a separate uh, episode for them, and nobody watched it, so I want to give these bands as much recognition and exposure as possible. Yeah, so all of these uh, top 25 are going to be on a special playlist on Prog Radio Friday, noon Eastern time. Uh, our normal shows are going to be probably 90 minutes to two hours, but Kevin over at Prog Radio is going to uh, collate all these Put it together uh, Friday noon Eastern time on Prog Radio. You get to hear my top 25. It's going to be awesome. But here we go, man. Uh, without any further ado, the best 25 albums of 2023. And I'm starting with Trevor Rabin's Rio. You know 2023 was good if Rio barely cracks the top 25. What a great record this was, man. It had been so long since we had an actual Trevor Raven album with vocals, and it was a welcome return. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Trevor Raven, for putting that out. Just incredible. Uh, at number 24, it's Haken's Fauna. Yeah, I know some people weren't completely thrilled about this album, but honestly, I wasn't completely thrilled with Vector and Virus. Affinity kind of left me a little cold, so to me, I was a huge fan of Aquarius, Visions, and The Mountain, and this kind of is a return to form. You even get Peter Jones back playing keyboards. Awesome record. I absolutely love it. At number 23, it's the Flower Kings with uh, Look At You Now, their 149th album, <laughs> or something like that. I think it's their 16th album, 17th album, something like that. I don't know. It's a stripped-down version of the band. Zach Kamins is no longer in the band. Uh, so they are kind of down to a four-piece where it's Royne and his brother Michael uh, playing bass. Hase Froberg, of course, and the great Italian drummer Mirko De Maio, uh, with a little bit of help from Lolly Larson on keyboards. I guess he's been uh, touring with them. But no list would be complete without the great Flower Kings on it. At number 22, it's Peter Gabriel's I.O. Yeah, uh... Dude just hit number one in the UK with his record. You all know he's been dropping a song every full moon all throughout 2023. Uh, so there's 12 songs on this thing. And all 12 are great. You got a bright mix and a dark mix. I haven't spent a whole lot of time with the dark mix. It's been the bright mix for me. Just fantastic. Really, really strong record. Did not see that coming. If you would have told me Peter Gabriel would have made this list last year, I would have told you you were a liar. At number 21, it's Patterns Seeking Animals in their fourth album, Spooky Action at a Distance. Yeah, this is the one without Rich Mauser. Uh, they've gone a different direction. I guess he was busy doing stuff, so he's got a new producer in here. John Baygold is one of my favorite songwriters of the modern prog era. You got Ted Leonard on vocals, Dave Miros on bass, and the great Jimmy Keegan on drums. This is a fantastic album. Pattern Seeking Animals is a lot more than just a Spock's Beard spinoff group. They're everything, man. They're awesome. At number 20, let's go to the Ukraine and Anthony Kalugin. Yeah, he put out a bunch of material in 2023, but the album I'm putting on my list is Sunchild, Exotic Creatures in a Stolen Dream. Yeah, Carpenter put some stuff out too. We're waiting on a new Anthony Kalugin solo album that apparently is going to drop in January also. This guy is hyper prolific. He was my most valuable progger for 2023. So I would feel uh, it would be a bit remiss of me not to include one of his albums on the list. And this is a good one, man. This is the best Sunchild album yet at number 19. 
Let's go to uh, the UK and a Canterbury inflected band Zop, their second album, Dominion. Yeah, this is the brainchild of one dude. I didn't write it down. I think his name is Ryan Stevenson, and he's had the same drummer on the first two albums. And, you know, that's really about it. But this second album is so much cooler than the first album. It's It, it actually paints with a few more colors. Yeah, it's Canterbury inflected. You've got some great vocals on this one this time. Uh, no Andy Tillerson this time around either, but uh, Zop Dominion, just a fantastic album that I've been returning to all year. Really, really love it. Here's one, uh, another one that I did not do a review of, of this top 25, I believe 21 of them got a review from me over the year. Uh, you know, throughout the year rather, but uh, at number 18, we're going to Ireland, and it's M. Opus with At the Mercy of Manamen. I guess Manamen is some kind of Irish sea monster or something. This is their third album. They're kind of symphonic prog, but imagine if David Bowie joined a symphonic prog band back in the 70s. you get a real good idea what these guys sound like. It's just awesome. I guess their first album was supposed to be like back to 1975. They're Second album was supposed to be uh, taken from 1979, and this is their 1972 album, but don't get too caught up about that. It's a modern prog album, and it's fantastic. At number 17, we're going to the Netherlands and Hackberry, Breathing Space, their third album. I had never heard of these guys before. Uh, Y'all have been telling me that their debut album is even better. I can't wait to hear it, because this here record is dynamite, man. Four songs are all longer. They're instrumental. Uh, they're just dynamite. They're pure prog, but they do bring in a little bit of the heavier side. So they're kind of heavy prog. Maybe Rush is a good uh, reference point. I don't know, but it is just awesome. And one of the better discoveries I had in 2023 for sure. At number 16, let's talk about Kite Parade's retro. Andy Foster uh, is the dude here. And uh, yeah, he's enlisted the help of the great Nick DiVirgilio on drums. That's never a bad thing. Yeah, he was on their first album too that dropped last year. But this is their second album. This is really, really strong. I love this record. Very, very cool. Yeah, the album title kind of gives it away a little bit. Uh, but man, that final track, Merry Go Round, 14 minutes of just pure prog bliss. I love it. Kite Parade's a band on the rise. Absolutely at number 15. Another big surprise for me. If you would have told me last year at this time that Yes would put out an album as good as Mirror to the Sky, I would have said, you're a bold-faced liar, man. It's not going to happen. Well, guess what, kiddies? It did happen. Mirror to the Skies is dynamite. It's awesome. It's almost everything we want from a Yes album. It's real, real close to, you know, mini masterpiece territory. It's a dynamite record. Steve Howe and the gang still doing it, still making music that's relevant and interesting. I really like the album. I, I was shocked. I really was at number 14. Let's go to Poland and Riverside's ID Identity. This uh, album was just a little bit different. Uh, I'm really digging the changes that Riverside are making in their last couple records. Uh, Fear Hope the Time Machine and Wasteland and now this one. Uh, they're definitely getting away from you know progressive metal, but they're still heavy. They're still exciting. Uh, yeah, there's a little bit of aha in the opening track, but you know don't let that discourage you. This album's Awesome Mario's Duda just keeps coming up with great songs. Landmine Blast and uh, Big Brother Tech. Just awesome, man. I, I love Riverside. I really do. And this is a fantastic record from them at number 13. Let's go down under. And uh, Unitopia's album, Seven Chambers. Yeah, when I heard that Chester Thompson and uh, uh, Alfonso Johnson were joining the band. What a rhythm section, man. That's the Weather Report rhythm section. Mark Truiak and Sean Timms, uh, you know, buried the hatchet and decided to, uh, you know, put out another Unitopia album. Sean Timms had been busy with Southern Empire, and Mark Truiak had been busy with United Progressive Fraternity. So they joined forces with the great Stephen Unruh and the great Dr. Greenwood, and they come up with this beast, man. Seven Chambers, just an awesome record at number 12. It's a band that put out two Dynamite albums in 2023. Uh, I'm going with The Man in the Iron Mask by the Samurai of Prague. They also did The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up in 2023, which is more like a Marco Bernard 
uh, solo album. They still kind of tagged it as a Samurai of Prague. This here one is the Samurai of Prague featuring Octavio Lacunina, who is the keyboard player for the great Italian prog band uh, Latte and Miele. They did that a uh, couple great albums back in the 70s. Such a great band. But man, Samurai of Prague just absolutely nails it here. Uh, great songwriting, kind of gothic, telling the story of, you know what the story is. You saw the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio. You don't need me to recap it at number 11. Uh, we're going to the UK and comedy of errors. And yeah, I probably say this every time I mention a neo prog band that I'm not a huge neo guy, but man, oh man, oh man, I will make an exception for uh, comedy of errors. They are on such a tear right now. Uh, last year's The Time Machine was just brilliant, and they don't even miss a beat here with Threnody for a dead queen. What a fantastic album. Very timely album. Apparently, this was written before Queen Elizabeth died, so it's just coincidence. But, you know, happy accidents create masterpieces, and this one's real, real close at number 10. Yeah, we're in the top 10, and it's right over my left shoulder. It's Ring Van Mobius and Commission Works Part 2, Six Drops of Poison. This was a weird album for me. I'd had it since it came out, and I didn't really know what to think about it. I like Ring Bang and Mobius, but these songs were shorter and kind of fractured little fragments of songs and whatnot, little song snippets and little themes would come and go. It took quite a few listens for me and my little brain to put it all together, but oh my goodness, of the three Ring Van Mobius albums, this is clearly the best. I'm so excited for what these guys are bringing to the table, like a deranged ELP triumvirate with a little bit of Le uh, just dynamite stuff with the like Vandergrab generator vocals. Man, I love me some Ring Van Mobius at number nine. It's Michael Whiteman and I Am the Manic Whale and his fourth album, Bumper Book of Mystery Stories. Hot on the tail of him uh, collaborating with Rio Okamoto last year with the Myth of the Mastrophus. I knew this album was going to be good. I had no idea it was going to be this good. Every song's great. And I love how he uh, backloads this thing with the two awesome epics at the tail end, Nautilus, and we interrupt this broadcast, both of which are right around 14 minutes long, both of which are some of the best prog music I've heard all year. Oh man, if you like Genesis, if you like Spock's beard, if you like a little bit of quirk like XTC, I Am The Manic Whale might be your band. They're just dynamite at number eight. It's Steven Wilson and the Harmony Codex. It had to be Steven Wilson in the Harmony Codex. I'm a big fan. Uh, I actually prefer his solo work to most of the Porcupine Tree stuff. Yeah, I'm that weirdo that thinks uh, the Raven and Han Kanati Race are better than Fear of a Blank Planet and N. Absentia, but that's a whole nother episode. The Harmony Codex. Man, there was so much hype for this thing leading up to its release. And let me tell you something, man. It did not disappoint. Staircase, the title track. I just love this album. Every song is cool. Every song is a little different. It really shows you all the different sides of Stephen Wilson's muse, all the different sides of Stephen Wilson's uh, absolute genius, and the Harmony Codex. Fantastic album at number seven. It's Yords Yo and Saligat. I am such a big fan of Norwegian Prague, and Yordzio is one of those bands that really got me going into that whole, you know, part of the Prague world. Norway in particular has been red hot, and Yordzio has been red hot, man. Their last three albums have just been great. Naftalin was amazing. Pastoralia last year. And now we got Saligat. It's really concise. It's only like a 40-minute album. There's no big, long epic. I think the longest song is the last song, which is, you know, I don't know, maybe like 10 minutes long. But you do not want to miss out on yours, yo, man. Just such an incredible band at number six. Staying in Norway, boys and girls. It's Lars Frederick Froisley and Fire for Tellinger, the Wobbler keyboard player's first, his debut solo album. He sings... 
uh, in Norwegian. He plays all the instruments except the bass, which is the dude from Elephant Nine. Um, and this record is just great. I loved it from the very first time I listened to it, but I will say that the last epic took a while. I didn't really care for it when I reviewed the album earlier this year. But as the year progressed, I realized there is nothing wrong with this album at all. It's an absolute stone cold masterpiece. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. I probably should have given it five, but my top five, all five of these I actually gave perfect scores to. Yes, I had five perfect scores this year. And wouldn't you know it, there are the five in the top five, boys and girls, at number five. From Italy, it's Il Basio della Medusa and their incredible album, Amia. Man, I love me this album. It is so cool. It is so different. I've never heard anything like this album before. It tells the tale of a of a German communist girl who's uh, who and her dad, I guess her dad was a German Nazi or whatever. They move to uh, Bolivia. They end up killing the guy that cut off Che Guevara's hands. And uh, I guess she, her next target was going to be Klaus Barbie. Uh, so it's the story of this whole weird story of Che Guevara and uh, this German girl. Uh, it's just wacky. It's weird. You hear the South American influence in here. It's just awesome, man. They got a brand new guitar player in the band. Really fit in their new direction. Wow. i just blown away by that album, man, at number four. Uh, in Sweden, there resides a little band called Agusa, and they have been putting out some of the best uh, instrumental prog music I've heard in the last five years, and their new album is called Prima Materia, and it is their best album. I really like their album from last year, which uh, the name kind of escapes me right now. It's a weird name in Swedish, whatever, but this one right here, man, oh, and Vardom I can't remember. <laughs> I should have had some better notes here. You see my notes today? Yeah, I, I'm not even... There's no notes today. If I don't know these albums inside and out by now, there's no reason I should be even doing this list. Agusa, number four. Incredible. At number three. We're just going to you know, slide up to Norway now. At number three. It's Seven and Pale and Summit, their third album, man. This thing just rocks. All four songs are just amazing. They all kind of fall between 10 and 15 minutes long. And all four of them are great. I just love this album. Fell in love with it from the first listen. You know, it's it's kind of King Crimson-y. There's a lot of jazzy sections. Um, it's just, I don't even know what they are, man. I have no idea. I love them so much. The talent level uh, within Seven and Pale is just ridiculous. I don't know how they keep it all together. I really don't. It's such an impressive uh, accomplishment. Uh, Seven and Pale Summit, if you haven't heard that record, definitely do yourself a favor and check it out. And at number two, I've got Moon Safari, Himla Bach in volume two. Oh, 10 years in the making, and the boys did not disappoint. Not only did they not disappoint, but they probably put out the best record in their career. I think it's the best thing they have ever done. I really, uh, really didn't like Himla Bach in volume one that much. Lover's End was all right. I'm a big fan of the first two, Doorway to Summer and uh, Blue Mill Jude. Those two have always been like my go-to Moon Safari albums. I got a new go-to Moon Safari album, man. Him Labak in Volume 2 with a great 21-minute-long epic called The Teen Angel Meets the Apocalypse. Oh, just incredible. What a great band. Those vocal harmonies kill me every time. I love Moon Safari. But for those of you who've been following the channel all year, you know exactly what's at number one. I, you know, I don't try to hide what I'm doing here. I don't hold my cards close to my vest. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And so uh, all year long, I've been banging the drum for this project. It's the Chronicles of Father Robin and the Songs and Tales of Aoria. Oh, my goodness gracious. Book one came out last month. Uh, book two just came out last week. Book three comes out next year on Charisma, but I am including the entire box set. All three albums uh, are available in the box set. It's probably sold out now. You probably can't get it, but you can get books one and two. So what this means is that uh, book three will not be eligible for album of the year for 2024. I'm sorry about that. I'm including all three in this. And if you don't know who Chronicles of Father Robin is by now, you obviously haven't been paying attention to this channel. 
It's a super group comprised of members of bands like Wobbler and Toosmark and Yordzio and all the stuff that I absolutely love. Yeah, Andres Wettergreen Strowman Prestmo is the lead singer, and he's probably one of my favorite lead singers of all time. And if you like Wobbler, there's no reason in the world. You won't like Chronicles of Father Robin. I love it. It's my number one album of the year. The only one that even came close was Moon Safari, to be honest with you. I thought long and hard about it. I listened to both over the weekend, and uh, yeah, Chronicles of Father Robin is my number one, but I promised you guys that I'd do a top 40, so I'm doing 15 honorable mentions real, real quick, in no particular order, Giant Sky 2. What are you even thinking, Erland Viking? Come on, dude. In 2021, you pulled the same trick. You released Giant Sky 1 in December. Here we go again, Giant Sky 2 dropped in December. It's a special record, man. If I had more time with this, I guarantee you this album would have made my list. Also, real, real close, Tuzmork's latest, Hestehoven. Mysteries, Redemption almost made the list. Great White Nothing, uh, Hymns for Hungry Spirits 2. The new Gong album, Unending Ascending, really, really strong. Cyan, Pictures from the Other Side with the great epic Nosferatu. Uh, the great French band uh, Lazuli Once almost made the list. The Italian band Homunculus Rez and L'Imperio dei Dapi Sensi almost made the list. This Winter Machine, that one hurt, man. The Clockwork Band, Plank Future of the Sea. Neil Morse, The Dreamer, Joseph Part One, came real close. United Progressive Fraternity, Planetary Overload Part Two, uh, Tri Top Rise of Cassandra, Lumsk. Uh, Tremede Toner, and the last one, man, at number 26. This one came this close to making the list, and it really, really hurt me to leave it off. It's Kimono with Mind Out of Mind. What an amazing album. What an amazing band. What an amazing year 2023 was for Prague. Just incredible. That's the wrap-up of my top 25 Prague albums of 2023. I will probably do my top 25 non-prog. I've got it written down here. I just got to figure out when I'm going to do it. Maybe tomorrow, maybe Wednesday, and then Sunday. On the Sunday prog stream at 1 o'clock Eastern, we are doing uh, the 10 best Zappa songs. So join us for that. And of course, I'm going to leave you with uh, 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 a reminder that every Friday at noon Eastern on Prague Radio, it's the Prague Corner playlist. And this Friday, it's going to be nothing but songs from my top 25. And like I said, it's probably going to be like a four hour episode. So tune in Friday, noon Eastern on Prague Radio for the Prague Corner playlist. Anyways, I love you guys. Peace in the Middle East, free Tibet, and God save the king. Save him. Save King Chucky. Save him. That boy needs your saving. That sucker needs your saving. That son of a gun could use your saving right now. Save him. Save King Chucky. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.